Hi everyone, here we retreat to the lecture 4 in econometrics. Today we will see that how can we construct regression model. The simple regression model is defined as a simple linear regression model. Mainly, this code contains only two variables. Here we're looking to explain variable y in terms of variable x. The most common equation here is y equal beta naught plus beta on x plus u. Y we call it dependent variable, explained variable, response variable, while x we call it independent variable, explanatory variable or regressor. Beta naught represent intercept, the value of y in case that value of x is zero. Beta one is the slope. We show that the change in y in case x is changed by one unit. U, which is error there. Or sometimes we call this as disturbance or unobservables. This model is a cornerstone for our study, as by understanding the meaning of a very simple model like this will open door to understand more complicated models. Here we try to interpret the simple linear regression model. Or studies how y varies with the changes in x. The relation between y and the x could be summarized in the coefficient beta 1. This beta 1 represents how the change in x could result in a change in y. For this reason, we call this is the impact or effect of x on y. Mathematically, we call this is the slope, or by how much does the dependent variable change if the independent variable is increased by one unit. And we measure this as change in y over change in x. As long as at the same time the change in u over change in x, which means interpretation only correct if all other things remain equal when the independent variable is increased by one unit. This is equal zero, which means there is no relationship between independent variable x and unobservable variables. The simple linear regression model is very rare in applications, but it is useful as a way of explanation. Now we turn to an example. In this example, we're looking to see how soybean yield could be affected by the size of fertilizer used in the land. Yield represents soybean yield, the dependent variable. Fertilizer represents the independent variable, the size of fertilizer used. Beta 1 measures the effect of fertilizer on yield 
holding all other factors fixed. These other factors that we're looking to keep it fixed could be rainfall, land quality, presence of parasites. Don't forget that. Beta note is the yield of the land in case of soya bean in case that we are not using any fertilizer. Another example here. This is what we can call a simple wage equation, which link the average level of wages with the average level of education. Beta 1 here measures the change in hourly wage given another year of education holding or other factor fixed. These other fixed factors could be labor force experience, work ethic, intelligence, and so on. However, beta note is the average wage for the person with no education. When is there a causal interpretation? Here we should introduce what we call conditional mean. Under independence assumption, E u given x equals zero means that the expected value of unobservables given specific value of x equals zero. The explanatory variable must not contain information about the mean of the unobserved factors. An example of this wage equation wage equal beta naught plus beta one idiot plus u. Assume that u in this case, for example, is intelligence. The conditional mean independence assumption is unlikely to hold because individual with more education could be expected to have more intelligence. Population regression function. Here, we're looking for the conditional mean independence assumption for the y, where ey given x means expected value of y given a specific value of x. Replace y by its value or equivalent beta naught plus beta 1 x plus u so we have expected beta naught plus beta 1 x plus u given x this exactly equal beta naught plus beta 1 x plus expected u x in case that there is independence in u in order to x which means EU given x equals 0. In this case, this will be beta naught plus beta 1x. And expected values of error given x equal 0. This means that average value of the independent variable y can be expressed as a linear function of the explanatory variable x. In this figure, we can see that the population regression function according to each different value of independent variables.
Driving the Ardennes Les Square estimates requires some steps. In order to estimate the regression model, one needs data. Data should be collected. If we have a random sample of data and the number of observations is n, we can arrange it as follows. First observation is an order pair x1, y1. Second observation is an another order pair x2, y2, and so on. Until we reach to the last observation or nth observation, which x n y n, so that x i y i represent value of the explanatory variable of the i's observation with the value of the dependent variable of the i's observation. For i start from one and end up with n. What does a good as possible mean? Regression residual y i hat is the difference between actual value y i and the estimated one y i hat. So y i should be used to compare with estimated one. The difference could be written as yi minus beta naught hat minus beta one hat xi, where beta naught hat beta one hat xi equal yi hat. We're looking to minimize the sum of squares of regression residual yi hat. So we're looking for some y i hat square from i equal 1 to n. The objective is to minimize this using the best values for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. Doing this will end up with the following. What we call ordinalist square estimate. Beta 1 hat is the sum of x i minus x bar times y i minus y bar from i equal 1 to n all of this divided by sum square of x i minus x bar square from i equal 1 to n and after getting the value of beta 1 hat we can find beta naught hat by taking the difference between the average y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar. We can find what we call fit as good as possible a regression line through theta point, which means we're looking for the line that already keep differences or errors or residuals is at the minimum. In this example, we're looking for a relationship between CEO, Chief Executive Officer Salary, and Return on Equity. Salary is salary in thousand of dollars. Beta naught is a salary with achieving rate of return equal zero. Beta one is the increase in salary as long as ROE is increased by one. And finally we have you the error. Assume that after collecting data we estimate this model and ended up with what we called fitted regression salary hat equal 963.19. This is intercept and we can interpret it as this is the salary 
the CEO will receive in case that achieving return on equity equals zero. But in case that we achieved a return on equity, each 1% increase in ROE resulted in an increase in the salary by $18,000 in average. Look to this figure. You can see that we have unknown population regression line. This is what we are looking for. This is represented here by dashed line. But after selecting a sample and do some estimation for the fitted regression line, we ended up with the salary hat with intercept equal 963.19 and the slope equal 18.5. The relationship is between X variable row and Y variable salary. Another example here. Wage and education. We know that wage has a positive relationship with education, measured by years of education. Fitted regression showed that intercept is negative, which is not that easy to already interpret under causality. But education has a positive impact. In the sample, one more year of education was associated with an increase in hourly wages by. 0.54 cent. Here is an example. In this example, we have a relationship between voting outcomes and come beginning expenditure for two parties, party A and party B. The dependent variable, vote A, represent percentage of vote for candidate A. Beta note, if this level of votes for A will receive without any spending anything for can begin. This represents those already fascinated by A, whatever, how much he is spending, or those totally against party P. Plus, beta 1 share A, which means percentage of can begin expenditure candidate A. And we have U for error. After estimating the model, we have vote A hat equal 26.81 this is the intercept and 0.464 share ray this 0.464 is candidate A's share of spending increases by one percentage point he or she receives 0.464 percentage point more of the total vote Properties of ordinalist square on any sample of data. Fitted values and residuals. Y hat equal beta not hat plus beta one hat x i. So y i hat is the difference between y i and y hat. Algebraic properties of ordinalist square ex regression could be summarized as following. Sum squares of R should equal zero because deviation from regression lines sum up to zero. Sum of multiplication of values for X 
and for errors which we called covariance between deviation and regressor is zero. Y bar equal beta naught hat plus beta one hat times x bar. Sample average of y and x lie on regression line. Here we have the following. Number of observation 15. Return on equity, salary, salary hat, which means after estimating the relation between return on equity and salary, we have estimated salary, salary hat. If we take the difference between actual salary and salary hat, this is what we call U hat. U hat is the error of the estimation. We reach it to the end. Thank you.